What's up guys, it's Anders here for Audio Plugin Deals. And in today's video, we're gonna look at the art of sidechain. We're gonna look at how we use it as a mixing technique, how we use it as a great effect in our music to add more of a feel to it. And then we're gonna dive into the ways that we can do that inside our DAW. So let's dive into the video. Let's have a look in logic, uh, essentially what the basics of sidechaining are and what you can use it for to help improve your music production. So the techniques I'm gonna talk through today, while some bits are gonna apply directly to logic, every DAW has some way in which you do sidechaining. Now in most cases, you're gonna send one audio signal to another. Cubase, Ableton, Logic, it's all very, very similar. Things like FL Studio is ever so slightly different and it's done via the mixer, but the result and purpose of doing it is really the same. So let's just take a little chunk of this track and I'll show you how I've used a common type of mixing side chain just so that the drums and the bass don't fight together too much. Hold up, don't get lost in the source. Jedi mind tricks, don't get lost in the force. Hungry for the money, free course. Mill, I send my name for the bill, and I'ma pay that, always keep it drill. I'm independent, I don't need no deal. I'm jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills. So we're gonna mute all the vocals out. And now we've got our drums and our bass working together. If I open up the compressor that's right at the end of my chain here on the bass. We can see that it's moving with the kick drum. If I mute the drums, we can see it's still moving. And if I switch the listen over here on the filter on, we can hear the kick drum that is controlling this compressor. And we can see actively what it's doing there. It's dropping the signal by about two and a half to three dB each time it comes in. And it's doing it in time with the kick drum, moving the bass out of the way just by a couple of dB so that the kick drum can sneak through. So if we switch the filter back on, pay attention now to how the kick drum cuts through the bass nice and easily. Hopefully you can hear that the kick drum is always there, it's always present. It's not overly overpowering, but it's balanced. Now if I turn this compressor off, listen to how the kick drum then disappears. There are moments when the bass line overpowers the kick so much that we can no longer hear it. However, when the compressor's on, just taking it down by two and a half to three dB in time with the track, in time because it's signaled by that kick drum, it brings it down enough that the kick is always present in the mix. We can always hear it and feel it getting through. It's not being overwhelmed by the bass line. And that really is the most fundamental use of side chaining and what it's used for in mixing so you don't have two things fighting one another. And the kick drum fighting the bass is one of the most common ones. Now these fundamental uses are well and good, but we can take this a lot further and make it a really creative effect. So I'm gonna load up another project now where I've used side chaining to be a lot harder and to really take effect on the track. And we've used it as more of an artistic flair rather than a mixing technique. So in this little whip of a project here, instead of using sidechain as a mixing technique solely, it's used more of an effect to give a feel to the track. And what we do here is we use the drums in the track to make the whole thing bounce up and down in a rhythm. So it's adding an extra rhythm to the track. So listen to what I mean. these three elements all pulsating together with the drums.
Now, if we were to turn off the compressors on these three channels, that bounce and feel goes away. If we turn them back on, we get that feel of the rhythm of the track again. That's an example of using it as a creative effect. So what are the ways that we can make this kind of effect and have it <coughs> and use it within a track? So to demo that, let's just grab a few sounds together in a brand new project. So we've thrown some loops together in Logic nice and quickly here, and we've got some drums and bass that work pretty well together, but there's some extra things we can do to them to give them that feel. Now, the first one is that mix technique, using the compressor to get the drums to drop the bass a little bit. And we can use that as an effect to add a rhythm as well. So to set it up is relatively simple. We're gonna get the compressor added on Logic just here. And in Logic, this top panel here, which if you can't see, just needs to tap this little gray oval here, set the side chain channel, and we're going to choose the deeper meaning beat here. Now this beat will now control the compressor. And we can see it controlling the compressor here, even though the compressor is loaded on the bass channel. And that's because we've chosen it as a sidechain input. Some things we'd probably like to set up would turn auto gain off. We don't want it to automatically bring the level back up and over squish everything because we're not looking to reduce dynamic range here. We're just looking to make a little bit of space. Second thing is we want this attack to happen quite quickly, but not so quickly that it causes an issue with the bass. So we're going to bring it down to around five milliseconds. But if we hear it start to pop and click, then we're going to give it slightly longer. Now the release can depend on the BPM of the track. Track. I usually find somewhere between 50 and 80 is going to work pretty well. Or we can leave the auto adaptive release on. So now we'll have something a little bit more like this. It's not taking the bass away as much, but it's still reducing a lot of the dynamic. So what we're going to do here is reduce our ratio. Just have that around 1.4. Now it's taking around 5 dB, we're just going to bring the threshold just to take it back a little bit less. And now we can see the needles moving nicely with the track. Take it away. And it just, it just gets you moving your head a little bit more, there's an extra rhythm in there. I use the Studio FET a lot. It adds a little bit of noise into the mix uh, and changes its adaptive release a fair bit and it gives an extra rhythm element. And I'll use this a lot as my sidechain option. Something else that can be done is to sidechain everything to the main kick drum. And to ensure that other drums aren't triggering, what we can do is in the filter section, make sure that low pass mode is on and we're going to reduce it down so just the kick drum is the one triggering. So now we shouldn't see the needle bouncing as much as it was previously. It's now just being triggered by the kick. Let's add some chords or something else into the track and see how we can get those working with the same rhythm as the bass. So we've added this nice melody over the track. However, it is quite overpowering. We could get it working with the same type of rhythm as the bass if we copy the side chain over to it. This time we might want the attack to be a little bit slower and the release to be a little bit longer. It's gonna have the same trigger time for the rhythm, but it's gonna pump a little bit more this way. So that's 
nice. It doesn't really affect the track too much. You can still hear all of the elements. It just gives that kind of feel and bounce to it. And you're making that using the attack and release. The other way we can do this is using some plugins like Exfer's LFO plugin or Cable Geist. But I'm going to send all of these instruments to a bus to create a much more extreme sidechain effect using Cable Guys Volume Shaper. Now, Volume Shaper lets us be a lot more aggressive with what we're doing, and we can take the sound away entirely. So the sounds are bust together like this now. And we set up Volume Shaper on a rhythm, so it's working one over four. So it's working on the same beat as the drum beat. And if we click on the GUI up here, we can make it so that the volume goes all the way to zero and then returns back to full level very quickly. And then decreases right on the kick. This way we'll get the volume of the bass and synths going to zero when the kick hits. And it creates that choppy effect. If we curve it and make it even more extreme, we get more space for a bigger kick. So now the volume has been taken out entirely, giving endless room for the kick drum so that we get this kind of effect. So because we've taken the level all the way down to zero, just for the briefest of moments, it's given the full room to the kick, so it feels a lot more aggressive. Volume Shaper 4 is just one of the tools you can use to do that. One of the other common ones is Exfer's LFO tool, and it pretty much does the same thing. We can have a more subtle version of it by using a blend and just having it to around 50%. This is the equivalent of using the compressor though and dialing it back. If you want this extreme effect, it's best to use this type of plugin rather than the compressor because you'll find it will pump and struggle to recover the sound. This is designed for doing this kind of thing. It also doesn't rely on the trigger of the drum, so it happens exactly on the beat and there's no delay or attack happening. It doesn't even have to wait for the transient of the drum to start taking effect. It will happen instantaneously. That's how we get that much more aggressive feel. So guys, that is the art of side chaining in a track and I hope the video was helpful for you and you learned something from it. It can be used as a really useful mixing technique or it can be used as a very extreme effect to give a flavor to a track. In things like house and EDM, it's used very heavily as an effect on the track to add extra rhythm into it. You'll find that even sometimes hi-hats and things like that are all sidechained to the kick to make the kick the most dominant element in the track at all times. Something like drum and bass, it will be used in the bigger genres or just specifically in the drops to cut the bass away and make sure the kick really cuts through. But in lesser genres, more like rolling breaks and liquid drum and bass, it will be used primarily as a mixing technique to make sure the kick drum always sits there but doesn't have to be this dominant driving force. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have fun creating music with it and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.